as this conflict intensifies by the day, some are asking China to use its regional influence to help de-escalate. You might remember Beijing brokered a normalization agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia earlier this year. It also enjoys warm relations with Iran, a country that backs Hamas, the terrorist group that launched the recent attack against Israel. Now, China has declared its neutrality in the matter, but has failed to condemn Hamas as the aggressor and accused Israel's response of being excessive. Still, China says it intends to send a peace envoy to the region. To advance the two-state solution, peace talks should resume as soon as possible. All kinds of mechanisms to promote talks should play a role in this regard. A special Chinese envoy will visit the region to attempt to reach a ceasefire and end the bombing and to de-escalate the situation. Obviously, lots of interests at play here. And about those, we can now speak to Valina Chakarova. She's a geopolitical strategist and consultant based in Vienna. Ms. Chakarova, welcome to the day. Now tell me, how could the conflict in the Middle East affect the global balance of power? Well, first and foremost, we need to understand that uh, we are already in a Cold War 2.0 scenario uh, in terms of the global context. That is a competition between the United States on the one hand and China and Russia on the other. And now we have a second front where this competition is being manifested, given the fact that uh, similar uh, development has occurred uh, in Eastern Europe when Russia launched the war against Ukraine. Namely, now we are observing similar behavior by China, also in the Middle East, where another convergence of interests between Russia and China uh, has um, logically emerged as expected. Mm -hmm. How is Beijing using the situation to its advantage at this point? Well, as it was pointed out, in fact, China was pursuing a normalization of relations between, uh, on the one hand, Israel and the Arab world on the other. Uh, namely, as it was also uh, highlighted, uh, the Chinese broker deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran. This was a very big uh, diplomatic highlight. And China was also implying uh, the, uh, the ambition to broker a deal between Israel and uh, Palestine. So, in fact, uh, the plans are now put on hold, as we've seen also uh, with the American plans uh, towards normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia. So here uh, now China is pursuing its uh, old, let's say, a uh, more traditional approach uh, regarding the region, namely that China has been, in fact, um, well, in support of two-state solution and has been supportive also of the Palestinian cause that goes back to the time of the Cold War, similar also to what Russia is doing. Mm -hmm. This is, of course, a hugely complex um, conflict. Do you think we'll see China hit a wall when it comes to its ambitions to, to expand its reach in the Middle East here? Well, let's not forget that China is already client number one when it comes to a lot of commodities uh, coming out from the region. So uh, the Arab uh, countries were, in fact, uh, strongly interested in intensifying the relationship with China, given the fact that China is also the largest exporter of uh, commodities in the world. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, China cannot stand neutral, uh, even though that it is once again uh, following the same approach as it did in Eastern Europe with Russia's war against Ukraine, sending an envoy, um, more or less uh, announcing a neutrality. No, China mm -hmm. is not neutral on this uh, conflict, uh, same as with the other. And let's not forget that we have a third front which is, of course, uh, Taiwan. So uh, it is a multi-front uh, competition. And here, once again, China will have to uh, position itself. So clearly, what we expect is that it will position itself together with Russia in a more convergence way, uh, as opposite to the uh, United States, uh, yeah. which is uh, clearly supporting Israel. Let's look at Russia, because they're seeking more immediate gains. How likely do you think this conflict is to draw attention and resources, of course, as well, away from Ukraine? Well, this is goal number one, as seen from Russia's perspective. Uh, the very fact that now there is a risk of uh, an immediate war, uh, that is the ground offensive that Israel is planning to conduct uh, in the Gaza Strip, is 
a good news from Russia's perspective. Why? Because the international attention will be drawn to another region and Russia, of course, will be more or less uh, continuing its war of attrition against Ukraine. That mm -hmm. is uh, goal number one. Goal number two, of course, is not to have a war with all the spillover effects in the region, but at least ongoing military tensions. This is why Russia has now uh, actually declared that it wants to position itself as a mediator while having all these conversations with key players in the region, such as Egypt, Iran, uh, even the Palestinian uh, Authority. So in a sense, this is a typical behavior of Russia to take uh, all the sides, to position itself between all the sides, to support all the sides, while actually making sure that the, as I said, military tensions continue. And this is also uh, positive from Russian point of view because uh, United States will have to get involved uh, on the side of Israel. Israel is strategic partner uh, among the most important strategic partners of uh, the United States. And that also means in the long run that Ukraine may face a situation where the Americans will no longer provide military aid. Another, of course, good news from Russian perspective. So yeah. all in all, it means that Russia will actually support the two states uh, solution, will yeah. actually go against a military uh, interventions or ground offensive, yeah. uh, but will also try to position itself uh, in between. We'll have to leave it there. Geopolitical strategist Velina Chakarova, thank you so much for your input. Thank you very much.